It's your boy, the one in DMV. And if anybody need any promotion, man, or they want to get their stuff seen on the tube, man, reach out to me, man. But that's enough about that, man. Let's get into this video. It's your boy, the one in DMV. And today we're going to be looking into the death of Miko Lee's brother, Dushy. Please don't worry, guys. This isn't going to be a disrespectful video or no dragging or none of that stuff. On these topics, I am very respectful. But pretty much I'm going to be telling y'all everything that happened, man. Because this story is crazier than the Money Mar. And it's crazier than the SEAL Team 6 indictment. And it's even freaking crazier. Like, man, this stuff is crazier And the cruddy murder situation, man. <sighs> All right, let's get into it, man. So I'm going to read this through for you guys. But I'm not going to read it. I'm just going to tell y'all pretty much what it says. Y'all can read for yourself. That's also ass up there. But pretty much, it was a shooting, right? And pretty much the shooting was on Longfellow Street. Pretty much six people were hit and two died, which included Dush. Pretty much what the feds are claiming, they are saying that somebody was shot before this shooting happened in the arm. And that this was swift but brief retaliation, man. Now, when I say this is one of them type of situations where, like, when you see the mask and you see the gloves and then, like, you see how militant, like, these people are moving, you begin to start thinking, how the hell do these people get caught, man? And please believe they got caught, man. And this story is astounding. So pretty much they got the suspect vehicle driving. Apparently it was a Ford or a Honda with 5% cents and uh, a chromed out silver trim mine. Honestly, when you see stuff like this, it really brings a reality to how, how harsh life can really be at certain times, man. But pretty much what happened was they pulled up, they sped through the block, they pulled in the alleyway, they ran around the corner, they ducked under for cover, and opened fire at people that were standing about three to four houses over in distance. So as you can see here, pretty much, um, it says, you know, they emerged from the front, in the back, someone also remained in the car. One ran around the corner, as you'll see in the next slide. Well, not ran around the corner, but they were standing at the corner while the other people were at a different angle, man. And in my opinion, I just feel like... My bad for the yawn, but I just feel like this is really senseless. Like, this is a different type of senseless when it comes to, like, violence. Like, do they even pay attention to their targets or is it just a I'm going to get everybody type of thing going on in the community because I feel like it is truly terrible to actually have to have family members or associates who have to live through the trauma of this violence just to find out that it's nine times out of ten mostly senseless. Another thing I would like to note is they were also shooting FM bullets, and ARP bullets. So pretty much the lowest caliber was probably a 223 to a 5.7. These guys came with no intention of grazing at all. And honestly... When you look at these photos and you just see, like, they're doing it just like you could tell they have no care in the world or no concern for public safety while they 
uh, do them type of activities, man. It's crazy. We really need help in the community, man. And this is where it get wicked, man. Now, pay attention to what I'm saying. They found a tall armed black male with a ski mask and a rifle, man. The other suspect was a black male armed with a rectangular square coming out of the back of his pants. So pretty much that rectangular square was, I guess, like probably like, you know how people be having like purple jeans and all that other type of stuff? They probably were just like some purple jeans or something like that. You feel me? Something the low key. You will not low key, but you know, probably some drip. They ain't no days about to go slide or about to go commit whatever activities you want to call it. But I feel like I don't think he should have wore that. But we're going to go into the story a little bit more, man. Now, four black men hopping out with COVID masks. Call of Duty style artillery running and sliding and spreading. It just makes you think, man, like, why why did none of these men fall into the hands of a job application and a career or a future so that we would have not lost? Because you got to remember, everybody loses in this game, man. Everybody takes a ill. But as you can see, you know, they got into the shootout. Newer Honda Accord, they pulling off, man. You feel me? Let's see if they get away with it, man. This is the part where it also proves that a lot of these street people really, really, really lack education. They were still riding around in their car after that shooting, and it winded up being flagged by the police because the witness gave a good identification of the car. So it was a brief chase of the car. They were searching for the vehicle. Apparently, they had parked the car. They burned it to a crisp. If you guys don't know about cars, that's on fine stuff. It's a certain degree to where the burns will go through. And actually, like, you know, really start to, like, you know, ash everything. Wherever they parked that car that that car was sitting, by the time they got to that car, that car was nothing but the frame from what is reported, man. And another thing, too, man, apparently they're saying that KDY is beefing with Riggs Park. And also something called the Uno Mafia Market Boys, which is from the area of Missouri Market. And they all appear to associate with each other is what the police are proclaiming. So don't say I'm proclaiming anything. I ain't say nothing. I ain't say nothing. But you hear me? They already know, you hear me? So don't say I said it. They already know. They develop a suspect. And who but not least, SpongeBob SquarePants. SpongeBob SquarePants. SpongeBob SquarePants. SpongeBob SquarePants. Well, if you don't know I'm making that joke, he has squares on the back of his pants. And that is what made him a suspect because the shooter also had a square on his pants. I know you guys are probably thinking, how does this, you know, this just could be a little kawinky dink or, you know, just like a uh, deja vu type of situation. No, this is how you know that it is really wicked out here, man. Pretty much when the police managed to get the piece of the tag that was taken off the car and identify where the vehicle came from, when they went to the rental company, apparently it was a rental car. I'm getting ahead of the story, man, but it's just so good, man. Pretty much, man, they rented the car. And they said that they have reported it stolen from about 
somewhere in northeast. You feel me? They said it was stolen from northeast before it was winded up being put on fire. This man apparently was getting three to four different rentals at the time. He was apparently saying he was using the rentals for apparently work, if that's what you call it, man. And he said his um, vehicle was having problems and it had to go to repair. So that's pretty much why he had to keep switching vehicles. But everybody know that if your car need repairs before you go renting cars, you're going to get it fixed. You're going to catch an Uber. You're going to hop on the bus. Don't that already sound sketchy from SpongeBob, man? This is the part where it gets tragic. So one of the witnesses from the rental car company said that the car did not have any sense before the incident happened. So before the the rental, the rental of the car, before SquarePants had got that car, you know what had happened, man? They took that junk to the tent shop. Don't that sound suspicious that instead of stealing the car, you would rent a car and then tent the car and then proceed to go slide in the same car that you rented with the same tags that are registered to the company that has it registered under your name? Another thing that concerned them that kind of made it seem odd is that that model car you know, they, they're trying to make it seem like, you know, that they chipped up the car. But that certain mo module uh, Honda had an immobilizer in its key. So if you didn't have the specific key, you couldn't start that car. Unless you had a specifically designed key tool that you would be better off going to steal SRTs than going around grabbing Hondas. Let, let's be honest. I know the feds was just looking at this man like, yeah, bruh. Yeah, bruh. But then they hit it like, I got you. I got you. So pretty much they ran the GPS of the uh, car and where it's been. So pretty much, you know, he ride around, man. He going up 13th Street, man. He up Galloway Street, man. A service director said that Honda began putting keys. You know, they tracked the whole location. Pretty much, they tracked the control module that showed them the location of the shooting. It showed a lot of stuff, man. But I'm going to let it get to the next slide before I go ahead and get into it. They had tracked these fools back to the whole... I don't think it's a hotel apartment complex, wherever they was living, man. They got took back to the crib, man. Once they traced it, they ran them cameras. Same outfits, man. Your man still got the square pants. They got the mask up. They got the fix. And they got the duffel bag, man. I'm not going to say, like, you know, when they say technology advances, like, do y'all just be thinking, like, Y'all going to outsmart the stuff that's been happening for 2,000 years before us. It's just, it, it, it really sits ridiculous to me sometimes. And then to go, and then you know you live on camera, and to walk in there with the same fit you just lived with, and then to walk back out, change the fit, thinking like, you know you mean in business. I feel like, you could put all that energy to changing your life. Instead of changing outfits, you could have changed your life. And that, this would have been a whole different situation, man. Because in my opinion, this is real stupid. This is real stupid. It, it don't even make sense to me. Like, I don't really know what's going on, and I don't want to know what's going on. But, man, it really needs to stop. Like, this shit gets sad. Like, you got to think, a lot of these people are youngins. A lot of people who get lost behind this kind of stuff turns out to be kids, man. And pretty much, man, there you go. You see him, man. He on the phone, man. Not that he's on the phone. This picture actually came from his Instagram account where he's wearing 
a similar or pretty much the same fit that he was wearing in the shooting of Dushy, man. This guy be the dumbest mob in the... Man, this man is a... He's slow. His elevator don't go all the way to the top. He thought he was going to be a shooter. No, he going to be on the cell block. The cell block. Or downtown. Downtown. But not though, for real. Like, this was the one of the world's dumbest criminals. And this honestly seems like one of the most pointless and just like senseless shootings ever. And I really feel for Migo Lee when I hear this story because it's just like, I feel like Migo Lee, if he didn't, you know, lose the people he lost and go through some of the stuff he went through, that I feel he probably wouldn't have crashed so early or been involved in some of the stuff. Like, even if he would have played a part, he wouldn't have been as active or as turnt as, you know, he would have been if, you know, he never was to experience this stuff. But back to the story, man. So pretty much after they fled the scene, they parked the car over there, man. He goes to pick up his homie, right? He pick up his homie, drive his homie over to the other side of the complex. And the dude just gets in the car and drives off. And the car is magically never seen again. The fans got the whole play, the whole pit maneuver, and the whole bliss on camera, man. And Youngins is wearing the same outfit, Mo. I don't think it is a good... I don't think it's a good idea, man. I ain't never seen too many people with them chunky pocket pants even, man. So, I don't know what to say on this, man. Because I, I really feel like this is really senseless. And these youngers could really be finding something more positive to do with their time. So pretty much, you know, after they got the phone and pretty much they they got their phone and they got all their conversations and their accurate locations. I think it was only one person who didn't have a phone on them. Pretty much Slidey P was sliding because that man, I don't even know what to say. Like, it's just, I don't get it, bruh. Like, and then he got a new phone just to get on Instagram and say, like, I don't got the same number no more, bro. Like, why you got to tell the world that, man? DM them. Don't, you got, y'all life don't need to be broadcasted on the internet. The world don't need to know everything y'all do, man. It's called privacy. It'll, it'll keep a lot of y'all out of jail the way some of y'all living. It's called privacy, man. You shouldn't have to tell the world, El Chapo, man. Because they're going to know when they lock your ass up anyway. But the thing that gets me, man, is this case has a bunch of witnesses, man. And people who sipping who are referred to as it. But pretty much, man, this is what I don't get. And I'm probably still not going to understand it. These people were parked at a house, man. And they had, like... Three or four UUs. For those of y'all who don't know who a UU or a Yuski is, a UU is a term for a stolen vehicle, man. They had a bunch of stolen vehicles parked towards the house, which also, you know, alerted them to check that out as well, man. So, I ain't gonna lie, world's dumbest criminals. They was moving loose. Anytime you got over four witnesses on your case, man, and then you also got think they got a, they got witnesses, and they also got um, an anonymous tipster, man. And when they tell you they got a tipster, man, when they use the word tipster, you better off taking the plea bargain, man, because that tipster about to rock your world, man. They had the footage. I think the home the cars was at. Was Galloway Street. But based on reading this slide right here, it says one of the witnesses were actually a suspect at one point. So it was determined 
that they were not there at the time of the shooting, man. I be telling y'all, y'all be wanting to get in these cars, be gangster, killer, killer. I'ma throw the ski mask on. I'm about to kill somebody. They gonna die. All of them, I'ma get them. But then when it's time to go to jail and you realize you're not that big or you're not that strong or you can't fight or you don't got the heart to stab somebody and watch the edges poke out of them. And you don't got that type of the mentality to change your mind to that. You realize you're going to be something called food, man. And that's why I feel like a couple of these people on this case cooperated. But, I mean, you can't even call it cooperating at this point. Because the case itself is snitching. Like, these youngins, from what I'm saying, they're doing crimes that, you feel me, there's no need for snitching. Because... Everything solves itself. They do the crime. They got the text messages. We just did the crime. They 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 do a move in the free car, but it turned out the free car running with somebody's name, and they kept the tags on the car while they were sliding. Okay, so report the car stolen. They got him on camera, dropping his friend off to walk across the parking lot to get in the car. These guys didn't think. They just were in a. You know how some people get when they think the world, you feel me? They not watching me. They don't care about me. I'm going to get away. I'm telling y'all, go to like, go to y'all local prison. If y'all not in the DMV, go to y'all local prison. Go to y'all local jail. And if they do interviews, I don't think they do. You not, you might not can talk to nobody. You might got to talk to the CEOs or something. Man. You got, might got to call Rick Rose. But... Pretty much, man, they will tell you. If they could have got away, they would have. If they wished they got away, they would have wished they got away. If they could have never did that shit and they had been out of jail and they wouldn't have been facing none of the time they would have been facing, they wouldn't have did that shit. Don't nobody want to go to jail, though. They, they want to be gangster. They want to be in the streets. They want to live every aspect of the demonic lifestyle that is associated with the drill culture that everybody glorifies. But, oh, when it's time to die, oh, man, I don't want to die. When it's time to go to jail, oh, I don't want to go to jail. Oh, no, I can't. Oh, I got stuff to live for. You should have thought about that when y'all was hopping in that car. Why don't anybody ever think about that? When they hopping in that car, man.